So with the front wheel off, it's a dead simple job to get the discs off, and you can do it either two ways. If you rest the wheel on two bits of wood on the floor, you can work on it that way, or you can work on the wheel up against a wall, which is what I prefer. The crucial part is that neither the wheel rim or the disc touches anything whilst you work. As long as the tyre is taking the pressure, it should be okay. If you're going to refit the old discs, then mark them up against the wheel so you can put them back in the same orientation. This is to keep your wheel in balance. When I remove disc bolts, I use gravity and friction to my advantage. Roll the wheel against the wall like this and wedge it in with your leg. Then, working on the left side, crack off each bolt working in a crisscross pattern, just like wheel nuts on a car. Because you are evenly releasing the pressure on the disc bell, it should stop it warping. Just half a turn on each bolt should be fine. Then turn the wheel through 180 degrees, so you can continue to work on the left and crack off the bolts on the other side. Again, as you undo the bolt, it effectively tries to turn the wheel and climb the wall, and the friction and gravity make undoing the bolts a piece of cake. No thanks. One thing to watch out for, disc allen bolts often have shallow heads, and so do make sure they're clean so that your allen key sits fully in its hole. With all 12 bolts cracked off, I can lay the wheel diagonally against the wall, making sure it's upright enough not to slip down and that the discs are not touching anything. Again, working in a crisscross pattern, undo each bolt and store them in a suitable container for cleaning later. It's not uncommon for disc bolts to be throw away items. Consult your manual to find out. You'll often find that the disc bells are stuck to the wheel due to corrosion. Using a soft face mallet, tap around the disc whilst holding it with the other hand. If it is really stuck, you might have to hit it from behind using a length of wood. Make sure you put a towel down for the disc to land on. Now do exactly the same for the other side. So with both discs off, it's a great time to check to make sure that where the discs seat against the wheel is nice and flat and free from corrosion. Now there is a little bit of corrosion here, so I'm going to give it a quick going over with a nice soft wire brush. Be careful not to damage the paint whilst you do this. It has to be flat where the disc seats against the wheel. If it's not, then your disc will not run true inside your caliper and will act like a warped disc and affect your braking. So that looks absolutely fine. You also have to check your disc bolts. You can clearly see the old green thread locking compound on these, but the manual tells me that they're not stretch bolts, meaning they can be used again. A quick wire brush to clean up the threads and then a squirt with brake cleaner. This removes any grease and debris and then evaporates to leave the bolts ready to have new thread lock applied. It's not vital to keep them separated into groups of six like this, but it helps me to make sure I don't miss one out. If you are replacing your disc bolts, consider carefully what material you use. I'm no metallurgist, but I've read that stainless bolts are not as strong as mild seal ones and are not recommended for mounting discs. Titanium bolts should in theory be stronger, but if in doubt, stick with the original equipment. Okay, so that's all the bolts nice and clean and ready to go back on. Now it's time to fit the new discs. With the wheel back diagonally against the wall, I can put the first disc on. Make sure the wheel is not too vertical so the disc doesn't slide off. Unlike the original Honda ones, these EBC contour discs can rotate in either direction but read the fitting instructions of whatever you've bought to make sure you're fitting yours in the correct rotation. Again, it's crucial the disc sits perfectly flat against the wheel, so keep an eye on it whilst you screw each bolt in. In this case, each clean, dry bolt needs a blob of thread locking compound before it goes in. I've also blown out the bolt holes in the wheel to make sure there isn't any dust left in there. Just like before, work in a criss-cross pattern and steadily tighten the bolts up. 
I use my Allen socket and extension to very gently do the first round of tightening by hand. Then I use my ratchet to tighten them up a little bit more, always working in a crisscross pattern. These discs have six bolt holes and nine spokes. Now my brain isn't large enough to figure out whether the spokes need to be lined up for any technical reason, but my obsessive compulsion means if I want any sleep I better do it right. Once I have done the same with the other disc, I can wedge the wheel against the wall again to torque them up. This time, however, I'll work on the right hand side, as I'm tightening the bolts and the wheel is naturally trying to climb the wall. As disc bolts are usually quite small and usually being screwed into an alloy wheel, they are usually not that tight. It's the thread lock and corrosion that make them feel tight as you undo them. Make sure your torque wrench goes down to low torques and always look at the correct torque settings in your manual. With the wheel completed, leave it to one side. 